In this episode of the podcast, we're going to find out whether appearance and specifically weight actually matter and whether or not you get cast on reality TV in this episode of the How To Get On Reality TV podcast. Welcome to the How To Get On Reality TV podcast with Dan Geesling, where I answer your reality TV casting questions once a week. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to another episode of the How To Get On Reality TV podcast. And spring is in the air. How can I tell? A lot of people are outside now, especially in Michigan. People are cleaning up and all of a sudden my email inbox is getting flooded because now is a lot of time people are taking action on creating their audition videos and planning their strategy to go into casting and working on their story. So things have definitely ramped up in terms of uh, people getting in touch with me. Um, But we have a great question this week from Clifford all about appearance and weight and specifically talking about getting cast and and how that affects your chances. But before we get into that, you know, with all the activity and, and, you know, I get this email all the time and people say, hey, Dan, what can I do to get cast on TV or what more can I do? You know, and the first thing I tell everyone is, hey, best thing you can do is listen to the podcast. They're free. There's now over 25 of them and they're going to help you in in a tremendous way but people you know say they come back and say okay I listen to a bunch of what do I do next and and the next thing I recommend to a lot of people is I'm not sure if you guys know I've written a guide about how to get cast on reality TV it's a complete step-by-step guide essentially what it does is it walks you through the entire casting process from understanding how it works to creating your audition video with two specific audition video strategies and just basically handholds you through the whole process from beginning to not knowing anything to actually sending in your video and then even past that once you hear back from casting then what do you do so if you're interested in taking a look at that guide or buying the guide you can go to how to get on reality tv.net slash guide to check it out so with that being said let's go ahead and jump into this week's question from cliff hi dan My name is Clifford. I'm a big fan of everything you do, so thank you very much for your website, your book, and your videos that you put online. It's much appreciated. Um, My question for you today is about appearances. I'm over 300 pounds, and I um, know that typically on reality TV, especially Big Brother, they don't typically have um, obese house guests. Big Brother Canada has kind of changed that mold. In that first season and second season, we had Suzette and Paul, um, they were also both characters that evoke negative emotions from the audience. And in our third season, the biggest person in the house happens to be a plus-size model. And I'm not a model. So I, um, this is putting me in a state of, do I stay how I am, this kind of fluffy, in appearance, non-threatening, uh, big, happy, jolly guy, or do I do what I think the casting producers want to see, and do I lose weight so I can be on reality TV, so I can be on Big Brother? I really appreciate you answering this question, Dan, and I thank you very much for doing this. Have a great day. All right, Cliff, thanks for the kind words about the podcast and the website, and it sounds like you may have also read the guide yourself, but uh, you know, you bring up a really interesting question, and and we're going to break this down into two parts. That's what I like to do when you guys send me questions. I like to break them down into parts so you guys can easily understand, you know, I guess that's my teacher background in terms of, you know, here's a problem, here's a question, how do we break it down that it gets the, the, the answer as succinctly and more importantly, making it as easily understand as possible. So, you know, Clifford's asking about two things. He's talking about appearance and then being obese. So let's talk about appearance first. And he says, essentially, what he's asking is, does appearance matter? And yes, it does, but not exactly how you think. So some people go into, you know, their audition video or an open casting call, treating it like a job interview. And I think I've talked about this, this in previous podcast episodes, but it's like the inverse of a job interview. So what you want to do is, does it matter how you look? Yes, of course it does, because you're going to be on TV. You're being casted. You're being cast on a TV show, not casted. Um, you're being cast on a TV show. So you want to look presentable. You want to look good. What does that mean? It means something different for everyone. Here's the best way you can figure out, and this will help people trying to figure out what do they wear to open casting call? What do they wear in their audition video? Wear whatever makes you feel best 
and most confident. So for some people, that's a t-shirt and jeans. For myself, it was a black button-up shirt, jeans, and, and dress shoes. For some other people, it's going to be a sundress. I, it, whatever you feel best in because if, you're, if you look, know you look good and you feel good, you're going to exude confidence in your interview or in your open casting call or whatever aspect of casting you're in, you you don't want to dress in something you're not comfortable in. Whether it's a suit and tie and you never wear suit and ties, don't do that. So yes, appearance matters to an extent because that affects on how you present yourself. I know, you know, personally, if, you know, if, you know, I, I'm not, if clothes, I have certain clothes I wear, you know, I wear to work out because I don't really care how I look. It's the same versus like, hey, if you're going out on a first date, you're going to wear something that fits nice and looks nice. It's the same thing with casting. You want to put yourself in a position where you feel as best as possible and you're not, you're worried about one thing only. You're not, you're, you're not worrying about anything internal. You, you don't, when you go, this casting process is not an easy thing and you don't want anything distracting you within your control, things within your control, how you look, what you say, how you prepare. You want all those things handled so that if a casting director throws a curveball your way, the only thing you're focused on is that curveball, not, oh, does this dress look good? Does this jacket look good? So does appearance matter? Yes, the best thing you can do is wear what you're most confident in. The next thing you bring up is you talk about, specifically you talk about the fact that, you know, does weight matter or the fact that, you know, your obese matter for reality TV casting. You even go ahead and cite a couple people that uh, you feel may not, you know, fit the stereotypical mold for a a person on a reality show. So here's what it comes down to. So essentially... It comes down to a couple of things because you can be 300 pounds and you can be extremely healthy, you know, depending on how tall you are, you know, it, it, this isn't a, a health blog, you, but you can, people can weigh 300 pounds and, and, you know, they can do anything, you know, they're, they're very active, they're, they're in control of, of what's going on in terms of, you know, they can compete in a reality TV show. So that's essentially what we're getting to is that it doesn't matter what you weigh, but here's a couple things that are going to happen. Number one, are you healthy enough to go on a reality TV show to compete or to put yourself in a stressful environment? I don't know. Only you can answer that question. However, the casting side of the production is going to find that out. So say you have a great personality the, and you move through the process, one of the things towards the end of the finals process is you're going to have to get a physical, which has really has no bearing on your weight. I know that sounds like a, you know, a loaded answer, but like I said, if you can compete, if you can do, you know, depending on the, the how strenuous your show is that you're applying for, if you can get up and down and you can compete and do those things, it doesn't matter how much you weigh. However, if they love you and they're like, hey, look, you got to go through this physical, are you going to pass? And you know you're not going to pass. Well, then, you know, essentially you're just wasting your own time. So that's really what it comes down to. I know, I can't think of the the individual, but I know there's been a few people, whether on like a survivor or big brother that, you know, used to weigh a ton and then they lost the weight. And then they got on and used that as part of their casting story. So essentially what it comes down to is, would you be able to pass a physical? If yes, then I think that's you, you know your pitch. If you know that you're healthy enough to, to do that, then it's not a non-issue. But ultimately, you know, only you can answer that question. Just know that for the majority of shows, especially if it's a physical show or any kind of show where there's you know, a physical competition, there's going to be something like that because the producers essentially want to make sure that they're, the producers are liable for a lot. And yeah, you sign away your life and contracts and, and waivers, but essentially, you know, they don't want someone not healthy, you know, not healthy enough to compete on the show because if they have to be yanked off or pulled off for medical reasons, it kind of, it messes up the whole production schedule and it's not exactly the ideal situation. So I hope this helps to answer your question, Cliff, you know, um, I think that sometimes people, you know, it doesn't matter. It's it's all on an individual basis. But just know that if you're healthy, it doesn't matter how much you weigh. If you can pass that physical, go for it. Don't let it hold you back. If you right now you're answering yourself, okay, I know I haven't been to the doctor, I need, or I, I wouldn't pass a physical, well, then there's your answer right there. And then, you know, if you really want to get on a show bad enough, then you're going to have to change some things. If not, then, look, you know, if – 
if you're not willing to change some things, let's face it, you're probably not listening to this podcast. But if you are, I hope I hope this helps, and I hope it at least gives you some insight so that you're not wasting your time and, and you put yourself in a position to, to be successful in casting because that's the whole point of this, you know, and that's the, the thing I appreciate about Cliff, you know, the fact that, you know, you put yourself out there, ask that question, I appreciate it because I guarantee you're not the only person thinking that. As a matter of fact, there's, it's ironically enough, there's a few questions that came in after you via voicemail addressing the same thing. So, Cliff, whether you realize it or not, you've helped – not only yourself, I hope this. I know this podcast hopefully helped you, but you've helped a, a few other people, if not a lot more, that maybe don't, uh, you know, don't submit a question and in the voicemail. But Cliff, as a small thank you for putting yourself on the show and, and putting yourself out there. We're going to send you a free digital copy of my book, my story, how a normal guy got cast on reality TV. Best of luck, Cliff. I hope this helps answer your question and, and gets you in a position to either make some changes or get yourself ramped up for casting, and so you can. Knock it out of the ballpark. But Cliff, thanks for the question, and I appreciate it. If you're interested in getting your question on the show, go to howtogetonrealitytv.net slash ask, and there is a, it's a, essentially it's a voicemail recording app. It's built in your browser. You can do it right from your phone. You can do it from a tablet. So it's super easy, and you know, as a small thank you, everyone that asks a question on the show, of course, we send the digital story for free. But uh, thank you. If you guys do want to Submit a question, make sure to go to that website. And uh, thanks, Cliff, for asking the question. Thank you so much for tuning into the 26th episode of the podcast. Been having a lot of fun with this in the new year. I hope you guys are getting a ton of help from this. I hope you guys, maybe you guys that are on the fence are shy about asking a question. Hopefully, you guys, the needle's moving and you're, and you're getting more comfortable. And uh, I hope you're taking action, you know, getting yourself in a position like Cliff to be successful in casting. And for those of you guys that are looking for a little more information, a little more help, or maybe even it's the equivalent of me holding your hand through the process, you can check out uh, the guide that I wrote, the step-by-step process on what you need to do to put yourself in a position to be successful in casting, you can check that out at howtogetonrealitytv.net slash guide for those of you guys that are interested in uh, taking it one step further. With that being said, you know, happy spring to you guys. I know if you're in the Midwest or East Coast or that's pretty much the coldest areas or even North and Canada. I hope you guys are enjoying the new weather, the new freshness, and hopefully it brings you guys some added energy to get your casting submissions in. Thank you guys so much. I will see you next Monday for episode 27 of the How To Get On Reality TV podcast. Have a good one, guys.